Um, so today's video we are going to discuss the group of fishes that my whole channel is practically about and the fishes that really get, well, a lot of people are very interested in. Plec, Plecostomus, Pleco, what does that common name really mean and what does it reflect? Because so many people have different answers to it and this creates a lot of confusion. So firstly let's get out of the way with Hypostomus Plecostomus. So, or how have you pronounced that? Hypostomus plecostomus, maybe? Um, so, this is a species in the genus Hypostomus. It's not actually that common. I don't believe there's been any like trustworthy like sightings or people actually claiming to own it in the last few decades. There's been a few like similar ones, but not quite, you can't really track them back to being accurate. The problem is, is Hypostomus plecostomus was originally exported from places like Suriname which don't have a large um, export market anymore and it has markings very similar to the wide majority, well a wide number not majority of different Hypostomus species um, which makes it a little bit more difficult to diagnose or identify. And it's very similar also to Hypostomus plecomoides, uh, pleco I think it would be pronounced. So it has this sort of lighter background colour with darker spots on it. And it's not a large fish, it's about 30 centimetres standard length. So this is the probably the origin of Hypostomus. Um, of Plecostomus, sorry, which makes it kind of, it's the most sort of iconic but without an image because so many species get associated with it. So the reason why so many species get associated with the word Plecostomus, um, the common name Pleco, Plec, is because there was once a genus called Plecostomus and this genus kind of was revised kind of uh, basically a lot of the species within this genus were removed and placed in other genera so this was about 41 years ago but ne this name still has stuck Hypostomus plecostomus was actually the type of this genus I believe so it would have been known as plecostomus plecostomus and this is quite common with uh, throughout a lot of scientific names like uh, bufo bufo I think is the common toad or type of toad anyway um, where the genus were the same um, ne um, word as the um, species I can't actually remember the term for it though <laughs> so this happens quite often within um, well in taxonomy in well, as we are classifying and understanding organisms, species might be placed within one group and then they'd be split into others. So, one of the examples that I can think of is Silurus. So, Silurus is, um, well, it's generally, it's got Silurus glanis. I, the Japanese, I can't remember, the, I don't know the scientific name of the Japanese. Uh, so lowest. But this actually, this genus actually included a lot of traditional catfishes that were then placed into other genera as we knew more. Um, so it's quite often, even Hypostomus plecostomus was placed into a spent a spence, I think you say, and this is actually sturgeon. We know catfishes aren't even really closely related to sturgeon, but this is just based on when we're really early trying to work out what where animals place where in a phylogenetic tree in an evolutionary sense. So there's multiple genera that were once placed into Plecostomus. This is why I think that. Um, we associate so many species with the word pleco, plecostomus, plec, um, and why there's so much confusion really with it. So those that were placed into plecostomus 41 years ago, at least, um, that was just um, when hypostomus plecostomus, I believe, was placed in hypostomus. So it's kind of an estimate of around when most of them were placed in different genera. So first we've got Hypostomus that includes members like Hypostomus lutis. Um, I must mention Cochlidon um, was synonymised with um, 
Hypostomus and members of Cochidon were once in Plocosmus before that. So that's um, Hypostomus Cochidon, Hypostomus Sonne, Hypostomus um, Basilisco. I don't know if I would say Chimera is meant to be in that Cochidon group, but it was described a lot later, I believe. You've also got Lokarichthys. Um, I wouldn't say that's one that many people have really seen. Um, I found no Terula, so that includes members that were once Squaliforma, and also Isorhinolacoria, which includes members that were once Squaliforma. Um, a Phanoturilus includes the Thresher Pleco, which is a Phanoturilus emarginatus, which was once Scoliforma emarginatus. So it's kind of, as we know more, we're dividing things because our knowledge improves. Um, a lot of people expect things to say stagnant and they complain that it changes, but that stagnation would only, like, it would hinder our understanding of evolution and uh, how things diverge. We've also got Locaria, Decisiria, uh, which is Butterfly Pleco, um, what was it, Decisiria Picta, which also um, has uh, Decisiria Bacchiura as an anonymizer, Paroto Synclus, there's quite a few members, um, I think it's Paroto Synclus Epili is the one that you might see in the trade, but I don't think that was ever included in the Costumus. Um, uh, Pognopoma, this genera actually, when I first, I was like, oh my gosh, it's a, a Rhine Lepine, and it looks like pseudo Rhine Lepis, but it's not. <laughs> and I was like, this has to be an old name. So I looked up and I was like, it's not an old name. Um, it's a really weird one that you don't really see. Um, next one is Ancestrous. So this is one that people say, is it a Pleco or is it a Brissonos? The fact Ancestrous once placed in Plecostomus makes it like, so which definition of Pleco are you using? And that's the problem with common names. Ancestrous includes um, Ancestrous AF cirrhosis, CF cirrhosis, SP, which is your common bristle nose. No one quite has a scientific name for it because no one knows. Uh, you've got Ancestrous Dolichopaterius, Ancestrous Hoplogenes, Ancestrous Ranunculus, that's your Medusa. Um, Ancestrous Macroplanus, also Medusa. Uh, Ancestrous Montanus, there's so many. Uh, then there's Delturus, which is a different subfamily, I believe, which is Delturinae, to your traditional Hypostomine, which is interesting here because already this gen genus includes what we now know to be separate subfamilies. And that, especially in the um, Pseudorhinopsis and Pognopoma, they're not actually that closely related to Hypostomine from memory, anyway. I also got chronic these, um, which I kind of like the name of. Um, Neoplecostomus, Pseudorhinopsis, which is uh, Pseudorhinopsis and Genobarbus. Um, you've got SP, um, what's it? Is it 95? I think it's 95. That's your famous Pseudorhinopsis, the beautiful, is it porcupine pleco or pineapple pleco? It looks beautiful, it's so unusual. Oh, I wish I had the space. Also, pa um, the last one is Paro Arihina. That Some of these pronunciations are like, oh my god. But not all of these are actually associated with Pleco, as I said, or Plecostomus. It seems like there is this real cherry picking of common names and it really causes the problem. So what is the problem with using Pleco, Plecostomus, Plec? And generally, this is due to the pick and mix of general, generally different sort of random Plec, random species from different genera, different subfamilies, and just picking and mixing, which makes it all really confusing. And then it causes not everyone knows what you're talking about. So you say, I've got a Pleco. Some people might assume you've got uh, Tereoplicthes, which I double checked, I thought was once included in Plecostomus, um, many species in Tereoplicthes, but it turns out they're not, uh, for some reason. I uh, know previously um, Tereoplicthes, which are commonplex, uh, interestingly Hypostomus is also commonplex. Um, Tereoplicthes was once split into, what's it, uh, Glypo, Glyte, Glypo, Ichthys, 
Oh yeah, but I can see the wording in my head, I don't know, I can spell it, but pronounce it, it's like, not there. Um, also Liposarcus, and I think there's another one. So, there is this pick and mix of different plecos that they shove under this category, and for one example, sometimes it's some hypostomine, all right lepine, because with hypostomine and cystrus don't count their bristle noses, but then why wasn't cystrus part of plecostomus um, at one point before we knew better? But then you could say the same with everything we call plecostomus apart from plecomo uh, uh, hypostomus plecostomus and hypostomus plecomoides because not. Um, also maybe any that actually have plecostomus in the name, which is not that many. Um, also maybe some hypopotomine, it depends on your age because you might have known autosynclus as under dwarf pleco or something. Um, or you might just say they are plecos anyway. And then some normal carne. And then so many people, there are no sub other subfamilies. And a lot of people stick rhinolepine right in hypostomine. Um, and it just gets really confusing because it's just this whole pick and mix. And no, the whole point of naming something is so you know you can talk to someone else and know what you're talking about. Otherwise, you might as well just be pointing and grunting at people. Um, so there's so many problems with this actual use of the name plecostomus, pleco, plec, because not everyone knows what you talk about. One of the major regions is monophyly. You want it to be a mono. Um, you want it to show. Um, now I've lost the actual spelling of the word. Five seconds of pronunciation. Mono monophyletic. I've written down like the singular of it, rather than it, words are just beyond me. Um, you want it to be monophyletic, so you want to include the ancestor and all of the descendants. That is ideal. Obviously it doesn't always work because a good example of that would be you've got dinosaurs and or you've got reptiles, but descendants you've got mammals, birds, and wherever you want to classify dinosaurs. Um, or you've got fish, then you've got tetrapods, which are mammals, birds, amphibians, reptiles it's like so it's not always possible but you want ideally that's like the dream of a taxa the, just doing it so monophyletically that you can have that ancestor and all of the descendants so this isn't obviously it's not always possible and common names you don't I, wrote, I don't know if you can really say common names need to be monophyletic, polyphyletic because there's plenty of other examples, killifish is a good one, that's uh, polyphyletic so it just it's like a pick and mix of different taxa uh, there was another one, gobies I think recently are a bit of a pick and mix they include largely one taxa then pick and mix of others um, any others? Sharks is a good one. Chondric these um, is like the general cartilaginous fish, and then you got um, like those that are sharks. Then you got ones that look like sharks but actually rays. Then you go into like bony fishes, and you got like red tail black shark, bala shark, um, black shark. It's like these common names make it all confusing because people think it, that some think something it's not and it can cause a lot of issues with care and as I said does everyone know what they're even talking about to each other like it's almost like talking to each other in a different language or slightly different language that they don't actually know what to talk about and this is why scientific names and tax are so important because you know what you're talking about if I'm saying Laurel Car a day I mean Laurel Car day and this is why when I refer to Pleco, I mean the whole of Laurel Car Day because there is no, it's this group of fishes, it's these species, it's no other species. Or if I'm talking hypostomne, it's these ones, not these ones, and there is no debate on, obviously there is scientific debate, but we have general classifications of what is what. Um, and 
it just makes it so much easier to use those scientific taxa and they do look like big words but have you seen the English language? The English language uses mixtures of Latin, French, um, Norse, would it be, would you say Norse? Um, Celtic, um, what else? A whole mixture. Like the amount of words we use from distant places now to describe things and this this just causes this whole the English language has so many grammatical rules, then I don't I don't know why people are complaining about scientific names. Cause everyone's so much more relaxed about how you pronounce it as long as you make an effort I think. Um and this is why scientific names were created by Linnaeus and why they, well, they weren't created by Linnaeus. Would you say? He created the binomial system, but there were scientific names before then. They were just really long. Um, also gives a very nice description. The etymology is beautiful to describe a species. One of my favourite is Satan Percy, Eupari. Um, Satan meaning um, demon. Um, spirit, person meaning perch, so the Satan demon perch, um, Europari being a demon from um, a demon from uh, somewhere in the Amazon, a tra it's a traditional name. Latin scientific names don't have to be in Latin, they have to be Latinized, which means they have to be in um, the Latin alphabet, and that's from my understanding anyway. But you'll notice there's loads of Chinese ones for dinosaurs, where a lot of the Chinese therapy, so that bridge between birds and dinosaurs, or birds and reptiles, a lot of them are Chinese names just because of where they're found, you get depending on someone's name. And it sometimes people are just complaining about a pronunciation when it's someone's name, it's like just it's not that bad. So I think it's partial laziness because you see it in other hobbies where people really make an effort. Like plants. How difficult philodendron, monstera, um, no one really cares how you pronounce it. Although there are some really funny pronunciations, especially when it comes to fishes like bircher um, or like, what's it, cichlid, chiclid. I've heard some other wacky ones, but I don't remember. Plec, plecky. Um, it doesn't matter, as long as people make an effort, Grammy is always the best one to hear. Um, but, and because we're using this common name, the way we use it is so generalised. We're generalising, we say plecos are big fish. Firstly, they're not big fish, because even uh, hypostomus plecostomus is smaller or I would say equal size to quite a few of the popular ones, which aren't actually that large goes to 30 centimetres standard length, that's the same as the sunshine pleco. Um, even when we look at like um, Tyrioplichthys, you've got much bigger um, species with another genera, like um, Panax. Panax are horrifically stunted I think in captivity because I've noticed the growth rate when they actually you give the awful flows of food. Um, You've got like 60 centimetre standard length, 50 centimetre, 40 centimetre standard length, I think 60 centimetre, Panax Shafari, which is like, it grows big. Um, even like Pseudocanthicus, you've got Pseudocanthicus, now I've totally forgotten, is it Gigas? It's the big one. Um, that's about what, 60 centimetre standard length, could get bigger, and then we look at Acanthicus. And they're still popular, they don't have that bad reputation. And we generalise, and then you've got the miniatures, even Hypostomine has so many small species, because we've got like Hypencistrus and Cistrus. And Cistrus has many members that are five centimetres long, standard length as an adult. Um, and then that they're aggressive, there is Hypopotomine, if you want to classify it as a pleco. Um, I do, then a lot of them are social. You've got gregarious members even in Hypostomine, you've got many territorial members. Um, they all eat algae, yes the majority eat algae, yes the majority are um, detritivores or algivores, but not all do. Um, not all are carnivores, not all change their diet that much as they age. Um, 
not all of L numbers are expensive or um, not all are easy to care for. There's a whole group that are more difficult to care for, not all are easy to breed. Um, you can't generalise 1,020 fishes because then we're just saying that I think, I know there's a lot more rodents, but you just general even rodents, you can't generalise rodents. Like say, I'll feed my guinea pig seeds or um, I'll feed my hamster grass. Actually, they probably would, I don't know. <laughs> um, but you can't generalise that many species because if you're not going to generalise, say, primates, primates, I think it's 200 species. You can't say all of them are carnivores, all of them are herbivores. All of them have, all of them are aggressive predators because there's so many that aren't. Um, but then there comes this other problem, and this is the major problem with the word pleco. What about loaches and other surface rasping species? They're not, not all are catfishes. Loaches aren't catfishes. But there are surface rasping fishes as that are. There's plenty from Africa and Asia. Um, I think Scissoridae has quite a few that look very convergently evolved with those hillstream loaches, but they're still catfishes. Are they plecos? Do they need the same care? Do they are they the same thing? And then when it comes to loaches, you got um, hillstream loaches. So, uh, Baltoridae, I think it is. Um, so, uh, that's... My na names of fishes are avoiding me right now. Um, what's the fate? Swellia. So, Swellia linilata, Swellia beviventralis. Uh, what else have we got? We've also got... Um, being good to a G, and I've totally, uh, totally forgotten. But there's plenty... Of of B40 as well as one uh, general. There's plenty of loaches that might be, that get called plecos, but are they really the same? Not really. They might feed on a similar resource to some um, lower carids, but they're very different fishes. I would argue that there is a lot of convergent evolution, but the niches are quite different to the diversity of lower carids there are out there. So, Generally, I do, I'm not keen on that common name being used to refer to loaches, especially. It's the kind of, they, I like it to be uniformed in a way, that I don't like loaches being classified under um, plecos. Because it just, it creates too much confusion. and. There is an all right for people to use any, a common name anywhere they want. Common names are made up words and they're, they're free to use, but they just cause so much confusion. And there is this stigma, almost a stuck up attitude around, I only want to use common names and nothing else. So I think uh, in my videos, Pleco means all of Laurel Car Day. Let's avoid any confusion. It means hypostomine, um, hypopotomine, delta, deltoide, deltoine, yeah, deltoine, rhinepine and norcarine and all species in that because it just helps solve so many problems and that's what I've always specialised in when it comes to my studies, apart from when I did study um, calicidae and coral calls, they're just different. Um, but law cards are what my videos are about and what I'm interested in. So largely I'm focusing on them. I have kept till stream loaches, Sorelia Bova Ventralis being the main one. And I've never actually kept any of the hill sh other hill stream catfishes because I've never, I don't think I've ever seen many of them. Especially not since all day. I have seen them preserved. They are amazing in a jar, like, it more looks like a gigantic hillstream roach, but a catfish. It's so strange. Um, but anyway, we're going to finish this video here. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, just comment below. I might take a while to reply, but I'll try and get back to you as quick as I can. And thank you.